Hello and welcome to our CertiPort MOS exam tutorial. We'll be going over the interface of the MOS certification exam as well as some test taking strategies for basically the best practices for taking this test. Uh, you might notice that this is not actually the exam and we actually legally can't show you footage of the actual exam, but this is a simulation of the test I made with my own questions. Uh, so some of the details won't be exactly right, but this should give you everything you need to know to get ready for your test taking. And uh, we still recommend that you look at any of the documentation that CertiPort sent to you to get you ready for the exam. But this is kind of just uh, an additional video to help you see the test in action. Uh, so to get started, we're going to look at the overall interface of the test. Here at the top, we have the project file. This is running whatever program it is that you're testing for. Uh, here we have Microsoft Word open, and this is where you're going to be completing all of the exam's tasks. Uh, below that, we have the split bar, which is the split between your uh, project file on top and all of the exam material on the bottom. And uh, the split bar will allow you to resize how much of the screen is project file, how much of the screen is exam panel. Uh, so this is the exam panel. It has all of the tasks you need to complete as well as the buttons for navigating the exam. And I'm going to be spending a lot of time explaining to you what all of these buttons do. Uh, first, we'll talk about a little bit more regarding resizing. We have this collapse exam panel button, which will actually function kind of like dragging this all the way down. It'll collapse the exam panel so you can just focus on your project file, and then you'd be able to click on that collapse button again to expand the exam panel and uh, give you access to all of your navigation buttons again. Uh, if you've been playing with this split bar for a little while and you need to reset everything because you don't like the size of the panels, you can press this restore to defaults button here, which is just going to set your overall interface back to how it was when you started the exam. Uh, last kind of similar button is in the lower left. It's this settings gear. When you click on this, it'll take you to a page that has a help file as well as magnification settings. So if you're having trouble seeing the text in the exam panel, you can change the magnification to make the text bigger so you'll have an easier time reading it. The main buttons you're going to be using while taking the exam are these task buttons right here. Clicking on any one of these will take you to the appropriate task, for instance, task two, three, four, though uh, you're mostly going to be using this next task button right here to go to task two, to go to task three, four, five. Uh, when the next task button disappears, as it did here, that means that you're done with all of the tasks for your current project. You can submit it and it will automatically load the next project. In this case, it would be project two and all of its tasks. Uh, if you want to go back to previous tasks on your current project, you can press this button to go back uh, here. That would take us back to task four or just click right on the task you want to go to. We want to go to task one, so I'll click on it, and now we're back to project one, task one. The next most important buttons are these marking buttons on the bottom. Mark complete, for review, mark for feedback. Uh, these buttons are for your use only. They don't affect your score in the end, but they're very important to the best test taking procedure. So. Mark complete is going to give you a check mark, kind of like is currently on task two right now. If we have completed a task, we're happy with how it went, uh, and we don't need to look at it again, and we're ready to submit it, we press mark complete, and we'll get a check mark on our current task here. Task one now has a check mark. If uh, we changed our mind and decided we wanted to spend some more time on task one and didn't want it marked as complete, we just press mark complete again. Not not clicking on the check mark to make it go away, but pressing mark complete and that check mark is gone. So now uh, it's just back to how we, we started with it. Now the important thing to remember is that marking things as complete doesn't affect your score at all. It doesn't give you points. It doesn't give you 
uh, a notification to Certiport to check that one because you marked it as complete, they will check all the questions equally no matter what you mark them. And it's just for your use so you know, out of sight, out of mind, I've handled that task. Mark for review is similar. If we click on it, we're going to get a flag right there, uh, an orange flag, and that tells us the kind of the opposite of mark complete. It tells us that we want to go back and look at that task again. So uh, let's say you look at uh, the task and you say, I really don't know how to do that. I don't know how to, for instance, set the orientation to landscape. And so we mark it for review. And when we get to the end of the exam, we'll have an opportunity to look back at anything we marked for review. And uh, that button, once again, is just for our purposes to know what we want to look at. Again, Certiport doesn't care how many things you marked for review. It won't affect your score at all. The last button's a little different. Clicking on it similarly makes something appear. Here it's this kind of speech bubble, but Mark for Feedback uh, is more for your communicating with Certiport. You would click Mark for Feedback if you thought there was something wrong with an exam question and you wanted some time at the end of your test to tell Certiport uh, what your feedback on that task is. So if I click Mark for Feedback for Project one, task one, at the end I can say, uh, I'll, have, I'll have seven minutes total at the end to talk about anything I marked for feedback. And that doesn't affect your score and you don't uh, need to mark anything for feedback. It's just another tool you have for, for navigating the exam and in this case for helping Certiport improve uh, the MOS exam. And just like with Mark Complete, Clicking on these buttons makes the mark go away. If I click on mark for feet, uh, mark for review, again, the flag's gone. We say, oh, you know what, I, I actually know how to do this one. Maybe I finished the exam and went back and I'm ready to tackle task one uh, in project one. I can get rid of my flag and uh, work on this. Uh, last set of buttons I wanna go over are these ones on the top. So here on the far left, we have the timer, this is frozen right now because it's just an image, but in the actual test, this will be counting down from 50 the entire time you're taking the exam. Nothing you do resets it or stops it. Uh, next to it is go to summary. We don't recommend you use this button because at the end of the test, you'll automatically be taken to a summary, which gives you a list of all the tasks and uh, in all of the projects and it will let you know what you marked complete, what you marked for review. There's really, uh, you don't really need to go and check this summary at any point during the test, but if you wanted to, it's always available and you'll easily be able to go from the summary page back to where you came from and we'll be going over the summary page later. Uh, this is your project count. This tells us that this exam will have seven projects. The Exam can have between five and eight projects. This one has seven and we're currently on the first project. Each project is a different file. Uh, here we have something that seems to be an essay on uh, astronomy, uh, but each project is going to be a different file with a different set of tasks and right now we're on the first one. Restart project would, would reset anything you've done to the current project file. So if I made some horrible mistake and wanted to just reset it back to the default that this project was when I started it. It won't reset the whole exam, just the current project. Still, it's a very dangerous button because let's say I've completed tasks one through four and I make a mistake on task five. If I restart the entire project, one through four are gone. So it's a dangerous button to only use in an extreme situation because it will reset all your progress on the current project. A submit project, as I talked about earlier, is what you're going to press when you're done, when you don't have any more tasks for your project. If you're on the last project, it will take you to the summary page, but if you are just completing, for instance, project one, pressing submit project takes you to project two, and it doesn't prevent you from going back to project one from the summary page. It just means I'm good with this file for now. You can close it and open up the project file for, in this case, project two. Uh, now, what you need to be aware of is that with between five and eight projects per exam and up to seven tasks for each project, you have a maximum of 56 tasks that you could have in only 50 minutes to do them. Now, we don't expect you to have 56 tasks, but that just shows you what the upper end 
is. And it means that you need to be moving quickly through, uh, through your exam. So if you look at a task and you really don't know how to do it, you can't be spending several minutes clicking around thinking about it. What you should do is go task by task. Uh, when you know how to do a task, you finish it, you mark it complete. If you don't know how to approach a task, mark it for review and move on. And when you get to that summary at the end of the exam, you'll be able to go back and look at anything you marked. The passing score is 700 out of, out of 1,000. That's 70% right. You don't need to get everything right. It's okay to miss some questions as you move along. And the best approach is going to be one where you miss some questions that you don't know, but get time to answer all of the questions you do know and are prepared for. You want to make it to that final summary page at the end and go back to things you don't know rather than finding yourself running out of time and just submitting what you have reached so far. Though you can still pass the exam without finishing it as long as you have 70% of the tasks completed correctly. Uh, so a good procedure would be to uh, read a task. So task one of a project is usually going to have a lot of kind of just for fun information describing why you're looking at that document like this essay on planets could be because you work for National Geographic and it's kind of just setting a scenario. That's not that important. There's uh, going to be some text that you don't need to read very closely, but you need to read the task instruction closely. So set the orientation of page one to landscape. I can do that. I go to layout. Uh, orientation landscape and then I might notice oh no I didn't only set page one to landscape I set both pages if you don't know what to do in that scenario you can't spend time learning how to do that but if you do know how to do it uh, go for it I'm gonna do that procedure right now but if you find yourself with a kind of a problem like that where you're not seeing the question go how it needs to just mark it for review and move on. But in this case, I can properly complete this. Only page one is set to landscape. I can mark it as complete and move on to task two. Create a blank footnote at the end of the second, oh, the end of the second paragraph. Sure, uh, I'll do that. If I don't know how to do that, I'm not sweating it. I'm just going to move on um, with the exam, but I'll just insert a blank footnote as described. All good, and this one was actually already marked complete. It wouldn't be on the exam, but that's fine. So. Now, let's say I wanted to hop ahead to task four. Easy, don't need to worry about this messy looking task three. Just click on task four and I'm there. Write the text for gas giants in the header on page two. Something to be aware of is that uh, text in quotation marks that you need to write needs to be written correctly, exactly as they have it. If you have a typo, you're going to be marked wrong. This means that uh, a really good tool to use is that actually underlined text can be copied to your clipboard just by clicking on it. So if I were to click on four gas giants, it would be copied to clipboard and then I could just paste it where it needs to go rather than uh, writing it out myself. So that's a little tool to be aware of. Let's say that I finished this and I wanted to go straight to the summary, uh, which we don't necessarily recommend, but for argument's sake, this would take us to the summary page where we see what we have marked complete and we see what we have marked for review. This would include all the tasks for every project. And uh, let's say I wanted to go back to task three. I can just click right on task three. If I wanted to go back to anything marked for review, I could just click marked for review. But if I wanna go straight back to task three, click on it, now I'm at task three. And one thing you wanna be aware of is that the exam might ask you to do something with a file. Here it's a .jpeg. You might see a .pdf, a .dox, uh, but when you see that, handle it just like if you needed to get a file in your own computer. So before paragraph four, I'm going to insert a JPEG. So I'll insert pictures, and usually you're gonna open right to the folder that contains the file you need, and just open it just like you would a file in your own computer, and uh, that is another task down. And so I would just move through the rest of the exam the same way, task by task, project by project, and get to the summary at the end and be able to go back and look at anything I still have flagged. Here, now that I've handled it, I can unmark it for review, mark it as complete, and keep moving on. So good luck with your exam, uh, and let us know if you have any questions.